exiled. The day begins with a morning offering before the devotion to the holy face of Jesus. Once again, all of heaven is there in the small room with no boundaries as you present yourself as a slave before the king of all kings and make your customary offering of all for all, unified with the salvific mission and merits of our Redeemer. Strong start. Just because a person no longer sees someone who is suffering doesn't mean that person has stopped suffering. You make a very pleasant two-minute trip from your home to the church for Holy Mass and see that you are mystically and also perpetually outfitted in the magnificent white wedding gown representing Christ's bride, his Catholic Church. In addition, you are veiled in black per our Lord's command. As you walk in, very kind people greet you and immediately you feel very welcome here. This parish isn't executing itself. It is kind, it is thriving, and it is growing. You make your customary offering while kneeling in the last row off to the side, and all is quiet and very peaceful. Holy Mass, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, is very quiet and peaceful also, and you wonder if our Lord will continue his wedding theology lessons here at this new location in exile. The holy innocents are mystically visible here also, so eager and happy to be helping. They present you with a mystical bouquet of white lilies. You are told that this bouquet for your wedding is a present from Jesus, your divine bridegroom. It represents his purity, which he is conveying to you in this very beautiful way. After the celebrant delivers a very helpful homily, Jesus begins presenting the next lesson. During the offertory, you see that in this church also, Jesus follows the small procession carrying the gifts up to the altar. He has reserved last place for himself and is carrying the cross to Mount Calvary. This is very dramatic as presented to you as if time is of the essence. Jesus is catastrophically injured and is suffering beyond description. The Consecration. Once again, Jesus steps off the way of the cross to mystically concelebrate the consecration with the celebrant. Once again today, our remedy shows us that he just keeps coming and coming, and coming, and coming to save us. If only we would listen to him and do what he says. The obedient, devout faithful must now dig deeper into the carpenter's toolbox. Daniel Sequoia. What a beautiful wedding, Jesus. Thank you. Holy Communion. You make another Holy Communion of adoration, reparation, and restoration amid the rubble of the American Catholic Church, which has become in many places the American Communist Catholic Church, and most people do not even know it. You alone kneel on the ground to receive first the sacred body and then the precious blood of our Lord during these precious elevations, during these priceless and so brief moments of Eucharistic adoration before being unified with our Savior and admitted to the school of sacrificial love within his divine soul. You do this completely on his authority, once again consuming a poisonous wedding banquet consisting of the divine bridegroom himself meaning containing gluten from the consecrated hands of Christ's Catholic shepherd who shoves the sacred host into your mouth amid a church full of Catholics who are too fearful, too prideful, 
too intimidated, too uneducated, and too cowardly to give our Lord the proper respect that his great dignity deserves from every single one of us. This is where the defiance of your pastor has placed you, amid the rubble where our Lord's real presence is adulterated by the unconsecrated hands of the unregulated flock. May God's will be done. What a mockery. Where is your courage, people? You worry about the respect of the pastor and those around you. What kind of respect will you get from people who are willing to desecrate our Lord? How little value you give to how you approach and receive your Creator and Savior, your God, who has given you everything. What have we been reduced to so willingly as our Divine Bridegroom elevates us from our nothingness and raises us to such sublime dignity as to be welcomed to wed our worthless lives to His and be unified with our Triune God as He mystically gives His very life for us once again on this day. What an abomination! What an insult! Have we no shame to so openly cower and place greater importance on ourselves, on our opinions and determinations, and on what others think of us than on properly reverencing Almighty God? May God have mercy on us all. Remain silently. You remain after Holy Mass concludes to properly adore our Lord and to make a proper thanksgiving to Jesus during the sacred 15 minutes of divine union with the love of your eternal life and your all. Once again on this day, Jesus is mystically taken down from the cross and after being held in the arms of his Most Holy Mother once more, is placed by her into your arms. You adore our Lord and extend your love and gratitude to the one who gave up his life for you during your wedding to him once again on this day. The devotion to the holy face of Jesus. You are inspired to pray the holy face of Jesus prayers. And once again, the prayers are visible in the air and transform into drops of his precious blood that have been combined with the works of reparation offered by the living martyrs of our time, gently descending from his sacred body, mystically crucified on the cross above all. You feel this on your skin as a soft rain. Every tear, disappointment, and grieved heart is a blank check. If we write our name on it, it is worthless. If we sign it with Christ's name, it is infinite in its value. Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen Today you are shown these drops of blood as conveying Christ's mercy and his light, similar to how the rays project from the Sacred Heart of Jesus in the image shown by our Lord to Saint Faustina. The prayers of the devotion to the Holy Face of Jesus three Christocentric Marian devotions in one that surpasses all other devotions and includes the devotions to his holy face, his sacred heart, and his divine mercy, make reparation to Jesus' impaled sacred heart as you hold him mystically in your arms. You are reminded that your heart has been wounded also by lances in imitation of Christ for his sake for your sanctity, and also for the sake of all. As our loving Jesus continues to be struck by the lances of the defiant in our time, including his Catholic priests and his flock, God looks upon the sacred heart of his divine Son, from which pours forth his precious blood and water, his mercy and his light. At the same time, Almighty God looks also upon your wounded heart, too, having become one in the great sacrament of sacrificial love for the sake of all. It is in this way that important, 
necessary graces are obtained in greater measure for the conversion of sinners, for the warming of hearts, and for the illumination of minds that have become darkened through the self-will. Tragically, many of these graces are rejected by defiant, treasonous hearts and intelligent minds. That is why we need our Mother. Since the Blessed Mother's Immaculate Heart is inseparable from the Sacred Heart of her Divine Son, our works of reparation also work intimately with the maternal intercession of the Mediatrix of all of God's graces. Jesus said to Sister Mary of St. Peter, Apply yourself diligently to honor my Sacred Heart and also the Heart of my Mother. Never separate these two hearts. It is my desire that you pray to these two hearts for yourself and for sinners. How much more proof do we need before we will understand that we are loved and valued by God and His Most Holy Mother beyond measure, and that this comes with certain moral obligations, responsibilities, sensibilities, our obedience, and holy humility. Spiritual combat training. Catholic special forces take up the work of reparation to the holy face of Jesus. Establish this powerful three-in-one Christocentric Marian devotion that according to Jesus surpasses all other devotions and includes the devotions to his holy face, his sacred heart, and his divine mercy in your homes and in your home parishes, as drops of his precious blood and his light fall from his sacred body crucified on the cross above the entire world. Your daily martyrdom is combined with these powerful drops of his precious blood that will ransom, liberate, restore, sanctify, and save a great many souls forever. To learn more about your vital holy apostolate of reparation and Almighty God's work of reparation to the holy face of Jesus, visit www.josephcarlpublishing.com Jesus said to Sister Mary of St. Peter, By my holy face you will work wonders and he still means it. This is no time for ignorance from Roman Catholic man. What we are facing is first and foremost a form of spiritual warfare. In a time where violence is rampant and the innocent are threatened, it is true that we must be ready to physically engage the malefactors. But if we deny the spiritual nature of this surge of evil we are facing, we will have no hope of victory. When confronted with atrocity, the immediate reaction of most people is, what can we do to stop it? Yes, that is the exact question we need to be asking. Summoning us to courage, St. Augustine challenges us to do battle. Hope has two beautiful daughters. Their names are Anger and Courage. Anger, that things are the way they are. Courage, to make them the way they ought to be. Jesus waits for us here with divine longing by St. Peter Julian Amard. Adore and visit Jesus, abandoned and forsaken by men in his sacrament of love. Man has time for everything except for visits to his Lord and God, who is waiting and longing for us in the Blessed Sacrament. The streets and places of entertainment are filled with people. The house of God is deserted. Men flee from it. They are afraid of it. Ah, poor Jesus. Did you expect so much indifference from those you have redeemed, from your friends, from your children, from me? Sympathize with Jesus who is betrayed, 
insulted, mocked, and crucified far more ignominiously in his sacrament of love than he was in the Garden of Olives, in Jerusalem, and on Calvary. Those whom he has the most honored, loved, and enriched with his gifts and graces are the very ones who offend him the most by their indifference. Offer up for this intention all that you have suffered during the day or week, that Jesus may be loved and adored by all. Because we ourselves are unable to atone for so much wrong, we unite ourselves to the infinite merits of our Savior Jesus. Receive his divine blood as it mystically flows from his holy wounds and offer it to the Father in perfect atonement for the sins of the world. Take his sufferings and his prayer on the cross and beg the Heavenly Father for pardon and mercy for all. Unite your reparation to that of the Most Blessed Virgin at the foot of the cross or the altar, and from the love of Jesus for his Divine Mother, you will obtain everything. With Mary, let us adore him. <laughs>